So then just, just more touching on, touching on the water, uh, just a quick graph to show you again just touching on how, how important it is. Uh, the main thing for me is that like, when you're not drinking enough water, uh, you become irritable again. So, and that will lead to poor food choices. Your cells like, need water, so for transportation and everything. So like, get, getting it in is really important. Removing waste. You can't detoxify, you can't do a, a cleanse. Oh yeah, so I'm, like, I'm busting myths all day here. So you can't, you can't do a, a cleanse. Your body uh, and your liver and your kidneys, will, they, they cleanse the body at the rate they want to cleanse the body. So if you go on a detox cleanse, like you're, you're, you're throwing money on the drink, okay? The best thing to do is look at your diet, clean it up a little bit, drink a bit more water, and your body will detox itself at its own, at its own rate. Uh, green teas, really good at green tea this morning. They're high in antioxidants. It's not going to help you lose weight. If someone's going to drink four or three green teas a day, they're trying to get you to drink green teas instead of eating something. That's all they're trying to do, okay? So but green teas are healthy. They have, they have health benefits, so there's nothing wrong with having them. But start don't look at that as a solution to weight loss. That all okay? Uh, stressed. So we said we all deal with stress. So I had a big stressful situation in work yesterday, which we had to deal with. Uh, and I do wonder why I feel I kind of manage my stress pretty well. Uh, yes, they got out and taught me with a situation. But what I learned to do is people are still kind of afraid of the word meditation. Uh, like as if it's something, I don't know, airy but don't call it meditation, just call it relaxing, to be honest. Uh, there's a couple of apps I'd recommend straight away. Is, uh, Calm is an app. Uh, Headspace, personally for me, I didn't find it really worked, but Calm is a really good app uh, that I downloaded. So when it comes to stress, you can see the other factors we're talking about, exercise, eating better, these are, these are kind of coming to one, so that there's massive benefits to it. When we are stressed, what happens is our body releases hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is catabolic, or catabolic means it breaks down muscle. So that adrenaline that we get, that fight or flight hormone, so like when, when something happens, like your body being like ready to fight and ready to go is all good if there's a bear behind you or something, but it's no good yet you're sitting in your office. Okay, and so what happens, it suppresses everything it doesn't need. So when you become really stressed, it suppresses like uh, stresses appetite, it suppresses like your, your, your basically your muscles are ready to work, but you're not working. And that, that's the issue here with stress, okay? And acute stress is going to happen. Acute stress means stress here and now, but, but it passes. Chronic stress is your issue. If you're chronically stressed, okay, you need to start taking steps towards it. Uh, stress management works from my own personal experience. But as you can see, like meditation, exercise, going out for a walk, sleeping better, eating better, connecting with your friends and stuff like that, and making lists. Now again, from my own personal experience, making lists is one of the biggest things I've, I've done. So I only started a diary about six months ago. Uh, anybody here, I honestly couldn't, couldn't stress, couldn't stress uh, how much it helped. Uh, I write my diary every single morning. It's your own thoughts. You don't realize how crazy you are if you're writing on paper. Trust me. <laughs> uh, but getting because like a lot of stuff feels muddled, like muddled up in your head. Like you've so much going on, especially if you want to drive a lot going on, to what I'm trying to do in different areas. And it's, it's not until it's down on paper uh, that we can really see like oh things aren't that bad. Uh, and if you are like if you are annoyed at something, right now you are annoyed at something and reading it back over is a bit like oh that wasn't that big a deal as it all would be. But in your head, trust me, it's a big deal. Uh, and that's where mental health comes in. Like if you're not looking after your head, it's gonna have massive, massive uh, detriment to your own physical health. Uh, so Exercise, as I said, is going to be the next one we want to talk about, but like in regards to stress management, uh, how many of you take like 10 minutes before bed with no phone? How many take your phones to, bed, to your bedroom? You all sleep with your phones in your bedroom, yeah? Yeah? Once, I mean, like, if you have another alarm, people probably don't have alarm clocks anymore, but I'd suggest putting your phone beside your bedroom, alright? So that's something because, uh, put your phone on airplane mode, is another one. So airplane mode is quite important to me because you have no one can contact you. Uh, and it's a scary thing, it's like, oh, what if there's uh, this? Trust me, the world goes on without you. Uh, and it might be hard to believe, and especially for me in ATP Fitness, we left it, my 7 key went away for a seminar and left it in charge of one of our employees, and stress levels were high that weekend. Uh, but ATP survived perfectly, uh, so what you're building up in your head isn't going to be bad. So when it comes to your phone, downtime is really, really important. So the and like, trust me when I talk about like, deep breathing and stuff that I wasn't that person six months ago. I was really like, oh, that's a bit weird. Uh, but like, honestly, sitting down 10 minutes before bed, put your phone away and like, just breathe in your own head, 
just say it's it's weird having time when you're on your own. Uh, I've not had any try to float experience and say tone. Uh, really, like once you want the worst experience I've had in my life, it's uh, it's like this new thing they have where you literally go in and you float. You're in a chamber for an hour, and you, there's music playing 15 minutes. Music stops, lights are off. It's just you floating and your own head for 45 minutes. Some crazy stuff. Uh, comes in. Really, really hard. Honestly, there, there was like a 20, there was a 30 minute period where I was like, I'm kind of getting uncomfortable with what I'm thinking over here. And I uh, so, but what I'm, what I'm getting out of that is that it was time to yourself. You'd be surprised. We don't really do that. We never really. Where is that uh, it's inside. Kind of was off. Uh, I want to. I want to free. Want to see this? Song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no. But it's, it was. It was. It was. It was an experience. And like, but what I'm coming back to is that it was the first time I really felt I had spent time on my own. Uh, and uh, to be honest, it was scary enough. To, like, you're not talking. So you, at home, you're talking to people. Or we'd be like mindlessly doing this on Instagram or whatever. Uh, like it's it's a weird experience, but trust me, it's it's something well worth doing. Uh, even though I'm saying sitting at home ten minutes before bed and like taking big deep breaths. Like you know, again, it's something we don't do. It's mental. To think about it. We're breathing every day, but we never actually like we never do that. And like what that does to you is is unbelievable. So when we get stressed, it's very important. I talked LCA issues last week. Understand every single emotion we're feeling right now. Okay, emotions are just bus stops. That's all they are. Okay, your your happiness isn't a destination. We're not walking towards happiness and we get there and we stay there. It's somewhere you go, you stop off there for a while, you, you get back on the bus, you move on, you're sad for a while. You know these emotions, they, they will they might be strong at the time, but they pass. You, every emotion will pass, and it's very very important to understand that. Uh, so just when it comes to stress management take the steps, like have these steps in place, like even one or two of them, that when stress hits, get out, like if you can get out of the office, get out of the office and walk around for five or ten minutes. What I've learned is to uh, react and not respond, or re respond and not react. So basically, reacting is when someone says something, as in being new to being an employer, it's very, like, you want to react straight away. Like taking five minutes, your response will be completely different to what it would have been if you said something straight away. So just again, that's just, that's just what does happen, that's, it's hormonal imbalance in your body. Uh, your body are the hormones are in, like, flying on the body, so it's important to like, control as best you can. How long for time? Yeah, we are right, yeah. Yeah, no, we're trying to be too, too much longer now. I don't have anything more left. Uh, physical activity, taking the first step is the first step, as I spoke about a while ago. If you have, if you do no physical activity at all, getting out for a walk is really important. Just, just do two or three walks a week, that will start off. Uh, find an activity you enjoy instead of endure. Okay, and that's where people will go, I have to join a gym to lose weight. No, you don't. You have to look at your nutrition, you have to look at your lifestyle, and you have to create like a calorie deficit either through a mix of training and nutrition. Now, who here knows, who's heard the word meat before? Have you heard the word meat? No? So you definitely know what it means, alright? So meat is, it's non-exercise activity thermogenics. All that means is the calories you burn, not from exercise. So what I'm doing here, I, I have a lot of meat because I always do my hands doing stuff. All right. So basically, your body, your main. This is something I want you to take from today. Almost all your calories, like seventy percent of your calories, seventy five percent of your calories that you burn in the day, are burnt standing there doing this. This is where I burn most of my calories, keeping me alive. It's called your BMR. The rest of the calories are burned through exercise and through digesting food. Digesting food comes about ten percent of what you burn in calories. So about twenty percent, twenty five percent of it uh, comes from Exercise. Yet, <coughs> we jump on that we have to exercise our ass off to try and lose weight. Now what I need to try and understand is that if you're burning most of your calories through your BMR, through me standing here talking to you, if I move a little bit more throughout the day, then I'm going to burn away more calories than I would. Oh, it'll, it'll, like instead of doing, oh, I hate doing hit sessions, I don't want an extra hit session, in that week, try and do, like, everyone has a, geez, I'm a smartphone here. If you don't want to, if you don't want to watch, so you go watch your tracks and steps. You, your phone has the exact same app, so you can track your steps. Getting up from the office, walking up and down for five minutes. <coughs> you think that doesn't matter? Over a period of time, that, that matters. You're burning almost all your calories by keep, keeping you alive and by and even doing this on your laptop and stuff like that. Like. So, the more you can do that, stepping up your knees will definitely, definitely help, okay? And weight training versus cardio, no, can you see? Can you all see that? So, I don't, uh, weight training versus cardio. I don't like the word versus. Because I feel they both have their place. If it comes to your goal is to to burn calories there and now, 
Cardio is absolutely fantastic. High intensity cardio is one of the best ones. Uh, very unenjoyable. Uh, you'll be able to break quickly. But uh, hit training is really good. Getting out for a long endurance run will burn a hell of a lot of calories. Okay. Cardio burns. Uh, cardio burns calories in the day and now. Longer term, resistance training is king. Okay. And the reason it is is because when I go back to my BMR, when I'm burning calories standing here now. So I'm 79 kilos. Anyone who says 79 kilos who is less muscle than me. Unlucky, I'm burning more calories than you right now. And that's, that's what it is. I'm burning more because it costs, it costs the body a lot of energy to keep muscles going. So if you increase your muscle mass, your BMR goes up the more calories you burn by doing nothing, which is unbelievable. So like, and that, that should be the goal as a longer term effect, like increasing resistance training. If you're new to resistance training, body weight resistance is resistance training. That's very important to understand. If you're in the gym and you're doing a little bit of, kind of full body workouts and stuff like that, you start attacking muscles like at the same muscle group in that week rather than doing a full body workout, body has to adapt, you grow some more muscle. Okay? Women, you will not get muscly. I walked in a women's only gym for like, oh my god, every single day it was, Ian, I want to join the gym but I don't want to get big and muscly. I was like, if you get big and muscly, let me know because I'm still trying to do it like eight years on. So, <laughs> like literally, it comes down to hormones again, fellas have more testosterone and stuff like that. Like, so, like, women, don't be afraid of weight training. Uh, we pride ourselves in the ATP, you know, people really embrace it and understand like people are getting a better shape because of it. And it's just it's just learning and education, understanding like people in the nineties and stuff seeing women bodybuilders thought they're gonna get big and muscly, they're taking loads of drugs, that's why they're getting big and muscly. Okay, so I said loads of important points points today, but this again is another one. Uh, I'll try and send you on something with a kind of recap. Increasing output takes a lot more effort than slightly changing input. Okay, does that make sense? So increasing output takes a lot more effort than slightly changing input. Output is our physical activity, going to the gym, going for a run, that's our output, that's how we're expending energy, right? If we can make one or two small changes to our input, what we're eating and drinking, that will save so much acid. So if you don't have time for the gym, you need to make more time to understand what you're putting into your body. So if you can, get it, if you can only train twice a week, instead of four times a week, then again, on the days you're not training, you need to account for that. If you're doing the same thing every single day, and then in two days a week you're training, and you're probably burning 200 calories, 250 calories, it's not much more than that to be honest, no matter what you're doing, uh, then those days you have to come for those, the other days you have to come for those calories. So it's very important to understand that like, your body is amazing, but just you have to learn how to control it. It's, as I said to yourself when coming in, uh, I wouldn't walk in here and know how to be an engineer. Like, so I don't expect you to know how to understand nutrition or how the body works fully. That's my passion, it's my career. But for you, it's important to understand that you need to learn the basics, need the fundamentals, like not all the complicated stuff. So that's one of the. Any questions on like training and stuff there? Whenever you have a normal muscle. Yeah? Right. You mentioned at the start today about metabolism, just training increased metabolism? Or uh, the sort of the direct effect on the Training, if you, train, if you do resistance training, it'll increase your muscle mass. Your muscle mass will have your metabolism speeds up. So yeah, so like, um, and again, mid post, uh, you don't have to have breakfast every morning. Breakfast in the morning is a great idea because it stops you getting hungry later on and going for the and going for the crap stuff. It's important to understand the difference between appetite and hunger. So this is where I get carried away my talks. Appetite and hunger are two different things. Uh, very quickly, so I want to keep it up. Uh, appetite and hunger. Appetite is walking past here. Someone you can smell. Someone has like a, a bun from the shop or whatever, and most that's alive when you start getting really hungry. That's appetite. You haven't eaten five, six, seven hours, that's hunger. There's a difference, okay? And understanding the difference, I, I have a big sweet tooth, trust me. And I was in the shop the last week with my girlfriend, and I went uh, up the counter with my coffee. There was bread, so they, it smacked me. The bells of chocolate right next to you. They do it on purpose. And I was like, oh my God, I'm starving. And Lisa was like, you just had something two minutes ago. Like before, we were in a restaurant and had a food, had a food. So I wasn't hungry. And but, like, it's understanding lifting, acting, hunger as well. It's just a, it's just a small thing.